You're watching CBC Television, celebrating 50 years. CBC Q next in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is the CBC Television Network. This is CBC Television, Canada Zone. in on the tracks for nine days. It's crossed the mountains, the foothills, and the prairies. And now it's here, at the gateway to the west, home of the golden boy, friendly Manitoba. It's the CBC 50th anniversary train. And now, live from the rotunda at Broadway and Main, CBC Manitoba brings you a special presentation, 50 and Beyond. Good evening and welcome to a very, very special day for us here, 50 and beyond, a retrospective look back at the history of CBC Manitoba. Welcome. Well, I'm Peter Jordan and it's great to be here. What a fabulous crowd. It's been here all day and uh, they've been lining up to line up to get on the train, haven't they? <laughs> but they fabulous. have and they've done it so patiently. They really, really have. Now, we're going to get to some incredible stuff. We're going to look back at 50 years of CBC television, aren't we? I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And though I haven't seen all of it myself, uh, Jennifer, I... I, I <laughs> You've seen a bit, though, haven't you? Like a lot of the folks here, I remember when television was black and white and there yeah. was one station, CBC Manitoba. And here's a look at what it looked like back in the 50s. What a time to be alive. And that's what we were, live. No pre-taped shows, no VCRs to play back a program later. The rule of the day was, leave the dishes in the sink. Five, the show's about four, to start. Three, two, one. Take one. This is the television network of the CBC. And in case you didn't know where we were, weatherman Ed Brussenholt would tell you. And so, our forecast for the Red River Valley, the heart of the continent, After a day of clouds. We were up in the clouds and down on the ground. Chasing trains and attending rubber chicken dinners. And that started the tradition we affectionately call the meet and greet. royalty in Winnipeg, and in Churchill. We got all dressed up for the Queen, and she dressed up for us. And when her representative, Governor General Vincent Massey, made a somewhat undignified arrival at the Paw, well, we were all there too. another kind of royalty along the way. Bob Hope mugged for our cameras. Harry James decided to swing by. And the man who, more than any other, personified the 50s, the father in Father Knows Best, spoke to a very young Jack Wells. Anderson. I don't know whether to call you Jim Anderson or Mr. Robert Young. What do you prefer, sir? Well, I suppose this is the cue for the old joke. I don't care what you call me as long as you call me for dinner. <laughs> Not all the stars were from out of town, as you'd see when you reserved some time for one of our variety shows. Good evening, Club Cabaret. We certainly do, sir. Tonight it features Maxine Ware, Reg Gibson, Mitch Parks in the orchestra, our dance team, Sporn Scott, and our special guest tonight is Alvin Bly. We even had a musical mayor. <laughs> musical perhaps but just as colorful were Deep the Chief and Duff Roblin, Mayors Coulter and Sharp, Premier Campbell here doing a meet and greet of his own. Actually all our politicians were pretty colorful when it came down to it especially whenever the ledge closed for summer recess. TV wasn't the only new technology in the 50s. The Marlborough Hotel opened the latest in parkade design an elevator for your car. 
the railway was saying farewell to steam and breaking out its shiny new diesel locomotive. Winnipeg streetcars gave up pride of place to modern electric trolley cars. On the outskirts of the city, Polo Park stopped taking bets from racing fans and started catering to shopping fans. We went north to the Trappers Festival where we met a smiling fur queen. And the races got off to a tangled start. To the south, we saw the unveiling of the International Peace Gardens. And to the west, we sampled Brandon's hospitality at the Western Canada Trade Fair. Wherever we were and whoever we met, it was good to be live in the 50s. Well, live never really goes out of style, <laughs> does it? We're here live in the rotunda. And um, now, Jennifer, a little quiz. Uh-oh. Did you happen to recognize the marginally musical mayor that was playing uh, the tuba there? Of course there? I did, Peter. That was uh, Mayor Stephen Juba okay. on tuba, September 10th, 1958, I think. Were you even born then? I just want to... <laughs> that is none of your business. But Mayor Juba was extremely popular. He was outspoken and he was outrageous. But don't take it from me. We're going to hear from another mayor, a very outspoken, outrageous, and extremely popular Mayor Glenn Murray. Let's have a big hand. Now, Mr. Mayor, do you have a, uh, a memory of CBC? Actually, CBC locally, my very first one was in the early days of the AIDS epidemic, and I don't know whether people know that, but CBC was the first uh, station locally to actually start reporting on the local AIDS epidemic and did some incredibly sensitive interviews, uh, was the first station to actually interview someone with HIV and AIDS, uh, and, and really played a leadership role in, I think, preventing uh, a lot of people becoming infected with HIV. Incredibly sensitive journalism um, and, and, and help calm people and explain how you protect yourself. I remember a wonderful documentary about your son as well. Yeah, that was a very challenging one. That was with the National Film Board, but then again, CBC picked it up. Back in those days, um, Ustin Reinhardt was doing the interviews, if you remember Ustin, and Susan Riley was the producer. Uh, and both of them became great friends. I actually, after the interview, I didn't see them for years, but they're, they're today some of my best friends and, uh, and, and two journalists of all of, and I meet a lot of journalists, two of the most phenomenal journalists I've met in my life. Really great folks. And how are you getting on with the CBC these days? Oh. With the investigative reporters and I-team reports and, you know, disclosures and... Uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I actually, you know, it's, it's, CBC has been a phenomenal, phenomenal community builder and intelligently involved in community and, and real, certainly in civic politics. They're the kinds of people who stick around and, and they have a memory, you know, they don't let you get away with much malarkey because they're not flash in the pan. They don't just show up when it's important or popular or, or, or you know, or sexy. They're there all the time in the trenches uh, and, and, and uh, they, 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 they have the memory bank so that those of us in politics, you know, have to stick to our stories and can't fudge. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much for being here Thanks. today. It means a lot to us to have you here as well. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mayor Glenn Murray, a nice hand for him, Absolutely, please. Absolutely, Mayor. Thank you. Well, Mayor Murray is not our only special guest. As you can tell, the gentleman standing beside me is a very important part of Manitoba. And, uh, and of course, it, yeah, he is the Premier of Manitoba, and I'd like to welcome you to the program. Now, I'd love your favorite CBC Manitoba moment. Well, my favorite memory is Ed Resinolt, the, the uh, heart of the continent, the drawing of that right. beautiful heart. I think we all, those of us who are over 50, and can congratulate CBC, will always remember that. I love Hockey Night in Canada. Oh, you know, that cannonading shot. I couldn't believe how he get those good big words out in the middle of a play-by-play -play of a hockey game. I also think it's really interesting. A lot of great people that are on the national stage have come out of this local CBC television uh, station, whether it's Peter Jordan here, of course. Or Peter Mansbridge. Or Peter Mansbridge, of course, uh, from Churchill, Manitoba. When the Prime Minister is being interviewed, it's Peter Mansbridge and Don Newman from Manitoba. When we have uh, some of the major sporting events, it's Don Whitman and Scott Oak. And, uh, of course, uh, all the variety shows that are so successful here. So it is really very much part of our culture and the creative communication talent we have. My favorite memory? <laughs> John Harvard once interviewed me. Uh-oh, tell me about I, I it. I want to tell you the story. I know this is not supposed to be a political comment, <laughs> but I, I was a rookie being interviewed, and he sat right next to me with his knees, and he started the interview with leaning into me, and I went back like that, and I'm sure the camera was on me, and he made me... I was playing defense for the rest of the interview. Good lesson, good first lesson at CBC. 
Oh, very good. Well, thank you so much for coming down. We really, really appreciate it. Premier Gary Doerr, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Jennifer, and happy birthday. I just wanted to thank you as well, uh, uh, Premier Dury, because I did get a chance to gild the Golden Boy's left buttock. Well, <laughs> you, Peter, you better work on your hockey team because it, let the uh -oh. truth be known that, uh, you know, the uh, the government hockey team beat the media hockey oh. team. And, our, and you will confirm that, won't you? I confirm it right here. Thank you, Premier Dury. Stay tuned now, folks, because we've got lots more surprises on 50 and beyond. We're coming at you this year, though. We're coming this out. is the CBC Television Network. I'll never forget walking into that big studio in Montreal for my first nightly broadcast of the 1976 Olympic Games. We were the host broadcaster, and the world was watching. There wasn't an athlete in the village that had more adrenaline pumping than I did. The Winnipeg Mafia, as we were called, won a gold medal at those games, along with our colleagues across the country. And CBC introduced methods of big event television that are still used by networks around the world today. This is the CBC Television Network. Happy 50th, CBC. You rock. This is what Canada is all about. All right, folks, we're back at our station in the station. All right, Jennifer, you did very well in the first part of the quiz. What can you tell uh -oh. me about CBC Manitoba in the 60s, firstly? The first thing I have to say to that is, was it a bit of a blur for you? <laughs> I'm sensing maybe. All right. Next, All right. Back to our big 50s and beyond quiz. <laughs> what was the first CBWT show to go network? The first show, let me think. You know what? That is pretty easy, Peter. It was a Red River Jamboree in 1960, starring yes. Stu Phillips, his yes. horse Nugget, yes. the Alltones, Peggy Neville, uh, Ted Comar, Selkirk Settlers, a square dancer called Joe Johansson, and the, the Valley Bows and Bells and Oh, the Church in the Background as Stu rides Nugget over the hill at the top of the show with Old St. Andrews on the red. Anything else? You've been living in the CBC library <laughs> or what? I have no life. <laughs> All right, who was the Ramblin' Man? Reg Gibson. Host of Hoot and Nanny. Ray St. Germain. Did you see Ray was here earlier? I missed him today. Yeah, yeah, he was being interviewed on the radio. A anyway, little aside. First season of Hymn Sing? Uh, 1965, it was produced by Don S. Williams, and he went on to become a reoccurring bad guy on The X-Files. Absolutely, 100%, Jennifer. <laughs> the truth is out there. <laughs> It seemed like everything was on the move in the 60s, including us. CBWT reaches out. By 1964, we were a bigger and better CBWT, a more powerful CBWFC. Even with the latest in mobile technology, we had to scurry to keep pace with the times. Our old city hall, dubbed the Gingerbread House, came down. walked into a brand new Civic Center. Winnipeg's airport staff moved into a state-of-the-art terminal, complete with the latest in radar technology. The new flyer bus rolled out of the shop and onto city streets. And the paddle wheel princess was gracefully launched onto the river. Oh, and speaking of rivers, well, flood after flood after flood led to the rumble of heavy equipment as construction began on the controversial Red River Floodway. Sometimes people marched to protest high unemployment, high student fees, or the nuclear bomb. Sometimes movement took a different course. People stood on the cold corner of Portage and Maine for peace, or decided to sit in Memorial Park and dance. Boy, did we see dancing. Now into the center and shout with Lee. It's time for the Red River Jamboree. And by the time Go-Go Girls came along, some serious questions were being asked. Do you feel embarrassed at all wearing a miniskirt? 
No, I don't feel embarrassed about it. I think every woman knows to put her knees together. As hemlines moved up, teasing stopped. And hair moved down. Pop quiz, everyone. Can you guess who was modeling this hairstyle? Made famous by these famous visitors to the Winnipeg Airport. That's right. With added sideburns and a kiss curl, here you see Burton Cummings on a CBC Manitoba show that moved to the beat of the 60s. That show was Let's Go. The year Canada moved into her second century brought one of the greatest changes of all to Manitoba and to CBC. It happened on a grey, soggy day. And now, on behalf of the Queen, who sends you all her very best wishes, I have the great pleasure and honour to declare the fifth Pan American Games open. And so for the city of Winnipeg, it's greatest moment of glory in our centennial year. It wasn't our first color presentation, but it was our most ambitious, as the world came to Manitoba as our broadcast guest. Looking for Canada's first swimming gold medal here. We were off to the races, moving into a whole new world of broadcasting. It looks like she's going to get it. Elaine Tanner. A new world record for Elaine Tanner. 24.44 seconds is a new Sixteen years of professional football. What do I do? I switch over to a color commentator for CBC. You know what amazes me? The similarities. And what are they? Hey, you got to be prepared. The intensity level is just as high. You got to have a great attitude, and you got to have team. And I mean teamwork. And they do have it. Whether you're the ISO guy or you're the guy in front of the camera, you got to work together. And I've always said, hey, you got great people. You got a great attitude. You're going to get great TV. Boy, that, that really says it all. Teamwork is what makes events like this possible. Well, you know, CBC Manitoba, as you know, Jennifer, has always had incredibly strong teams in TV, radio, the new me media. Now, up, up on the tr train platform where people have been touring the anniversary train all day, they've been lining up to line up. We've they got have. Terry McLeod and Ron Robinson, of course, from CBC Manitoba Radio. Thank you, Peter. And uh, so I'm here with Ron. Ron, you had a walk through the CBC Museum on Wheels. You even made a donation to it, I understand. Well, it's a funny thing, Terry. Earlier today, I saw a picture of uh, Juliet singing with Doug Crosley, Winnipeg boy, of course, at the front. And yes, we talked about Juliet on my show because of the, uh, the different material that's going to be seen on TV. And I had a phone call from a listener who said, Ron, I have Juliet in the closet. And she's been there for 50 years. We think you're the man to take care of her. I, I, I. I. Well, a life-size, full cutout of Juliet in fine shape. So I brought it to Ivan, who's the archivist here, and I said, can you make use of? And he said he'd be delighted, and Juliet will be taken back to Toronto and put in the museum where the cutout belongs. <laughs> Not Juliet, the cutout belongs. You know, the most remarkable thing that I saw was uh, the Friendly Giant's costume. Right. The Friendly Giant was a giant, but when you stand beside the costume, he's just a man. I was stunned. And the little chair to curl up in yes. was so tiny. I thought it was bigger than that. T that's TV, Terry. <laughs> See, we work in radio. We don't understand these magic things. Now, other things that you saw, though, that from your own childhood or later? Well, I saw one of Mr. Rogers' original trains. You know the train that is the signature that goes through his set right. on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood on PBS? Well, he started at CBC in Canada, right? He worked for two years right, right, right. at the CBC before he went to the States. And... Uh, Ivan pointed out that one of the problems with the train is that neighborhood is spelled the Canadian way, so they couldn't use it in the States. Oh, too bad. So did you watch that when you were a kid? No, or maybe growing up? Or? No, I watched it as an adult. I was a fan of Mr. Rogers when I was big. Okay. Well, there were some lovely things in the train, and of course, when I talked to Ivan as well, he mentioned there were things that, of course, it couldn't be in the train. And you know what? He made me want to go to Toronto, to the broadcast center, to the museum. I'd love to see the rest of the things that couldn't be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, Ron. Okay. And we'll be uh, right back with more 50 and Beyond. This is the CBC Television Network. Peter Mansbridge is hot. <laughs> like, my God, that guy. Oh, why are you on the news, man? You should be in, like, Tom Cruise movies. <laughs> Thank you. 
A significant date in my life on CBC television was April the 4th, 1968. We just filmed Lenny Bro in concert in Nashville with RCA Victor Records, Lenny's first album. We'd finished recording at six. The phone rang. Martin Luther King had been shot in Memphis. So we were down there doing a variety, great show, and landed up with one of the most significant stories of the past 50 years. This is the CBC Television Network. Happy birthday, CBC! From Velma and Velma. <laughs> well, it does look like Big Hair is back. Did you get a look at that little uh, promo there? <laughs> but Peter, I'm not quite sure what you're going to do about it. <laughs> That's a hair joke again. I'm isn't sorry. It? Wendy made me say it. Wendy, our producer, made me I'll say get it. Her. All right. You will. Well, folks, we're back here with lots of friends here at Via, and thank you all for for coming, folks. Now, I have a question here for everyone. Um, how many of you were in Manitoba in the 1970s? Good. All right. Thank you. How many of you remember anything at all about the 1970s? Thank you very much, folks. The check is in the mail. Spread it up amongst yourselves. All right. <laughs> Folks, here's what we remember about the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> the acid, the music, the wine, you know, the whole works. Just a beautiful thing. That pretty well sums up the 70s. Party time. There was a lot to celebrate, and if you couldn't attend in person, you could still share in the action by tuning in to CBC Manitoba. The decade started with a bang as Manitoba's own centennial arrived. These legislative grounds will be the scene in the next hour for the culmination of the royal visit to Manitoba. There was a royal welcome at the ledge. The history of Manitoba is one of human endeavor. That message was echoed in 1973 at the RCMP Centennial Ceremony and again at the 100th birthday party for the city of Winnipeg in 1974. There were other milestones as well, such as Rainbow Stage's 25th anniversary production of The King and I. Hold it. Who's that villainous looking character? There were other youngsters who turned to our cameras. Great day, huh? Nice and sunny and warm and quiet. Nothing special to do, just sort of take it easy. You know, there's only one thing wrong with a day like today. And I bet you know what it is. Yeah, it's too quiet. Next will come a first class hotel, and then the community arena. Perhaps then, with success, true economic and political independence will be met. Peter Mansbridge, CBC News, The Paw. The idea of a municipal parliament is an interesting idea, but I have some real doubts as to whether it will be implemented. It's hard to take it terribly seriously, and in the light of the fact that it was never communicated to the Liberals, it was communicated to the press. I'm not going to put it off another 10 years, because now I'm going to make a decision at, say, age 50 or, say, age 55. Then it becomes horrendous. Do I start all over again at age 55? Just about impossible. Nothing was impossible for this young man who told us... I like living in Manitoba, and uh, this is where I'd like to stay. But before you could say Rideau Hall, it was... Bye, Grandma. <laughs> And Manitoba's former premier, Ed Schreier, became Canada's youngest governor general. Bye -bye. Bye. And who could miss this million-dollar smile as Bobby Hull donned a Jets uniform and helped bring the Avco Cup to Winnipeg? Or this famous flower wearer, tucked in among the fans at the Canada-Russia game? Other flower children could be found at the Winnipeg Folk Festival, and the CBC Manitoba Super Special made sure all Canadians could attend. I want you all to stand up and dance with me, because that is that's what it's all about. There certainly was no shortage of dancing in the 70s, but at the end of the decade, the rarest party of all had viewers standing still in fascination. On February 25th, 1979, CBC Winnipeg climbed onto the roof with an expert on sunrises. 
and pointed our camera skywards to witness a full solar eclipse. Oh, I am absolutely enthralled. Magnificent. Wow. And Bill, if you look around, you'll see the horizon looks like a sunset, a, a yellow glow out in the distance. It's a very, very strange day. And if you look around the city, the lights are on. And up in the sky is that incredible sight. And what a sight we have here tonight as well. The beautiful dome of the Rotunda here at Broadway in Maine and all the people who have come out to help us celebrate 50 years of television. Now, Jennifer, hosts and anchors have changed looks a lot over the years. Um, I wonder, what do you think they're going to look like in the future? I wonder, Peter. Well, in a virtual world, a host could be blue if you wanted her to be. But, but I wonder what she would talk about. Mmm, junk food. It's so, like, virtually cool. You like junk food? Like chips and salsa? How about cookies? I have lots and lots and lots and lots of cookies. Well, that certainly is a new look, but, but back in <laughs> yeah. the 80s, there were lots of other new faces with bright futures here at CBC Manitoba, weren't there, Peter? Well, that's true. Now, some people have called the, the 80s the me decade, but really it was more about lifestyle, you know, trying new things and in new ways and just sort of opening up. And big up. shoulder pads. Yeah. I have those even. <laughs> um, in some of these familiar faces, you can see they were trying some new things. were about fads. The Winnipeg department stores claim they can't stock enough electronic video games to meet the demand. And fashions. What was the stuff? It was tie-dye. Yeah, tie-dye. Yeah, tie-dye and cotton. I think these clothes are ugly. Ugly, ugly. And fun. The 80s had them all. And CBC Manitoba embraced the lifestyle wholeheartedly. We went happily in search of the perfect summer. We took a fast breakaway on the Manitoba River. We hit the gym. Hi, I'm Sandra Lewis. I'm the co-anchor for the CBC 6 o'clock news here in Winnipeg. We jogged along at the Manitoba Marathon. Good luck, and we'll see you at the Canoeathon in a couple of hours, Peter. Thank you, Ernie. Peter Sullivan from the Winnipeg Jets. And we listen to our Body Talk. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Body Talk Theater. And isn't it true, Marion, that even if Max does go on this diet and lose weight, he's really not changing his eating habits? Sometimes we hit the streets for the beef of the week. Weather was always a hot topic. In fact, this was the only thing Sterling Lyon and Howard Pauley would ever agree upon. It's really hot. I don't like it one bit. But the alternative was... <laughs> the wine is kind of crystallizing. <laughs> I'm so hot! Oh, I'm so cold! Academy Award nominee Cordell Barker cut his animation teeth on our temperatures in an early Winnipeg item for Canadian Sesame Street. Huh? <laughs> ah. That's better. Tropical islands were sort of a theme for Manitobans. Winnipeg MP Dan McKenzie even suggested Parliament annex the Turks and Caicos Islands to the Canadian landscape. Oh, it's an absolute tropical uh, uh, paradise. I can't really say whether McKenzie's enthusiasm is justified. Nobody would send me away from the Winnipeg slushy snow to go down there and check it out. Oh, no. Ted Weatherhead may not have gone south. Hey, good morning and welcome to Switchback live from Disneyland. But Laurie Mustard managed to switch back his parka for a t-shirt in the middle of winter. Besides the weather, other things that bugged Manitobans were, well, bugs. There were canker worms. There's millions of them up there. Very yucky. Wood ticks. Forest tent caterpillars. <laughs> and a glass spider. We couldn't go to sleep. There was just no way. But the greatest bug of all was the mighty mosquito. One mosquito got so big in Camarno, it was expected to become our provincial bird. But in 1985, that honor was given to the great gray owl. The Winnipeg Mint had waterfowl on its mind in 1987, a bird that would soon dive into all our pockets. Transcona preferred a bird of a different feather, 
and gave this local hero a taste for other people's jobs by making him honorary mayor. It was a living he took very seriously. Something that was taken very seriously was brain power. Each week, we'd see the best young minds in Manitoba reach for the top. Find the eighth term of the arithmetic progression for which the first three terms are now shown on your mind. 31. 31 is the answer, yes. The answers were not so easy for the adults when Jack London asked, what is the right thing to do? The cameras are there, the reporters are parked in the driveway. Is that what the media is about? You saw the human reaction of that. The media was growing and changing at an exponential rate in the 1980s. And CBC Manitoba was heralding in a whole new era in public broadcasting. We are live at the Rotunda and we have more surprise guests coming up on 50 and Beyond. This is the CBC Television Network. Happy 50th birthday, CBC. We hope you do more um, making a living. One of my more harrowing moments in live television was doing a live sports cast from Winnipeg Stadium and all of a sudden a huge awful storm came up with lots of rain and hail and all the while I was trying to concentrate on doing the sports but at the same time I was worried that the cameraman and I were going to get an electrical shock from all the wires that were now lying in pools of water on the AstroTurf. CBC journalists have one of the trickiest jobs at the station. Nothing is constant. One day a story will have you on top of the world, and the next you can feel the thud as you come back to Earth. Oh, you're right, Jennifer. The early 90s were a lot like that. Our reporters were constantly dealing with struggles that all Manitobans were facing. But you know the saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's a bleak day for students and staff at Winnipeg School Division No. 1. We're laying off 2,900 employees. To give them some very hard news. The grim news is layoffs. It's maybe cut back as well. Another 137 will be out of work. A cut of nearly $600,000. Need to cut $6 million out of their budgets. The hospital has to cut $19 million out of budget. Farmers say without that cash, the family farm will die. Difficult times bring with them an insatiable thirst for information. In the early 1990s, CBC Manitoba's reporters and journalists faced the challenges not only of tough economic issues, but also of the explosion of information technology. We went online. You can listen or watch the radio and TV reports by clicking on the icon next to the story. And undercover. He came on to me in this case because he wanted uh, 16 rolls of fresh meat. We talked to farmers. Now it's the old question. Am I making a mistake? Am I doing the right thing? And people on city streets. That's what the public wanted to hear. What do you think of the Prime Minister's apology? Uh, I don't think too much of it. And walked a mile in other people's shoes. Well, I want to thank you very much, Sam, for showing me your job. That was really cool. We listen to Manitobans. Whatever it happens to be, tonight, anything goes. How do you think the deficit got out of hand? And um, do you think us, as the youth, should have to pay for your guys' mistakes? And we're the providing money this is, this is, we're all getting to this money thing. And, and, and if you don't know that we're broke, you get your facts straight, guys, you know, do your studying. Prove your me homework. wrong, Dorothy. Find, the, prove the, one fact wrong. Here's what our callers had to say. It seems to me it's just another form of taxation, but indirect and gutless. And documented Manitoba history as it unfolded. Tonight, all roads lead here as Manitoba votes. We met a lot of people along the way. Amazing people who are making history in Manitoba. And when a bad little boy called El Nino came to call, the storm of the century 
added to the flood of the century. When you're up here with so much water, it's hard to tell where you're at. Working around the clock. Day 16 or 17. My days now follow uh, uh, river crests. They don't follow natural days of the week anymore, just river crests. And good evening from the junction of the Red and the Assiniboine Rivers in the heart of downtown Winnipeg. CBC cameras and microphones captured the miracle of complete strangers voluntarily working flat out to save another's home. Pet or livelihood. Serious business brought us together tonight. And boy, are we going to have fun. And the concert that followed gave voice to and support for the myriad emotions experienced by Manitobans as we all started to rebuild. Before the end of the decade, CBC Manitoba was privileged to document yet again the enormous outpouring of the goodwill of Manitobans at the 1999 Pan Am Games. It is a testament to the people of this city and province that the Pan American Games have in their history only been held twice in Canada and on each occasion Winnipeg. That groundswell of energy and commitment catapulted Manitoba and CBC Manitoba into the new millennium. And now, please welcome Her Majesty's representative, His Honor, the Honorable Peter Leba, Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, and the Honorable Shirley Leba. As Lieutenant Governor of Manitoba, it's a special pleasure to bring Vice Regal greetings to CBC Television on your 50th anniversary. A distinction, I note, that you share with uh, the Queen as Her Majesty celebrates the 50th anniversary of her accession to the throne this year. Nous faisons le fait que pour le 50 ans de Radio du Canada, nous faisons connaître tout le quoi de notre grand et vaste pays. Just as the railway connected Canada from coast to coast and opened up the West in the 19th century, the first CBC broadcast signaled the beginning of a whole new era for our country in the 20th century. Canadians thousands of miles apart were united by a wonderful technology that allowed them to exchange views, news, and even clues on Front Page Challenge through the magic of television. Canadians got a good view of Manitoba through national shows that were produced here like Red River Jamboree, the Peggy Neville Show, Him Sing, and, and Canadian Sesame Street. The tradition continues today with Country Canada, It's a Living, and Disclosure, and through regional news productions and national news coverage that originates here. Over the years, CBC Manitoba has won more than its fair share of awards for excellence in programming and production. For a demi siècle, Radio Canada and registre l'histoire de Manitoba pour tous les Canadiens à travers des émissions premier. Bon anniversaire. You're much to be proud of as you celebrate your contribution to a half century of entertaining and informing Canadians. And at 50, you are still in the prime of life. So happy anniversary, CBC Television. Thank you very much, sir. If you have a few more minutes, sir, if you could just stay for a few more minutes, uh, that, that would be great because we have, I hope you can stay a few more minutes too because we have a very special treat.
good's not the word. I, I'm boggled by it. It's, uh, it's, it's the deepest, most honest, heartfelt contact. It's love. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Fred, Haley, Kendra, and Danica, the Penner Pack. <laughs> Bringing us together to celebrate our home. Listen to the heartbeat, stories of a nation. Bringing us together to celebrate our home. This has always been a gathering place, a gateway to the West. A new world waiting for families, beginning their prayer request. Listen to the heartbeats, stories of a nation, bringing us together to celebrate our home. The ox carts and the river boats gave way to cars and trains. In the wink of an eye, we've learned to fly in rocket ships and planes. Listen to the heartbeats, stories of a nation, Bringing us together to celebrate our home. Today we're making history as this changing world spins round. Questions all need answers. The answers can be found by listening to the children. Discover what life means on this journey of hope and this train of dreams. Journey of hope. For this train of dreams, journey of hope, train of dreams, on this journey of hope, train of dreams. Listen to the heartbeat, stories of a nation, bringing us together to celebrate our home. Listen to the heartbeat, stories of a nation, bringing us together to celebrate our home, bringing us together we celebrate our home. Uh, he's got a little something. Thank you, thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank you very, very much. You know, this show is called 50 and Beyond. And as wonderful as these last 50 years have been, I am very proud to say that it is the children who will be taking us beyond. And what better way to have a birthday celebration than to combine the children with a, a Via Rail baggage cart carrying the biggest cake that the Eiffel Tower pastry shop has ever made. All right, everybody, young and old, one and all, sing happy birthday, CBC. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Yes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, CBC, BC. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. We need a knife. Okay, who's going to be the first to cut the cake? Bad okay, cake. normally they don't trust me with sharp things, I'm but gonna just scoot how in about here. you, sweetheart? Would you cut the cake? Oh, are we, is she too young to hold a knife? I don't okay, know. You be oh, well, <laughs> come on over here, sport. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Did you make a wish? Did you make a wish? <laughs> Go. Okay, sport, come on over. Here. Oh, you want to cut you one? Okay, cut here you go. Too? I think we may have started. Okay, what's your name? We may each want to cut one. What's your name? Luke. Okay, you're going. Oh, nice job. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my piece. No, I have a. 
I have a question sure. for one for a couple of our kids. Yeah. I want to know. Well, we'll start with the oldest kid. I don't even know if you qualify as a kid anymore. What is your favorite CBC Manitoba moment? Oh my goodness, uh, my favorite CBC Manitoba moment. Maybe your dad? This, this is coming close, I must say, this moment right now. Oh, it's wonderful. You did such a beautiful Thank job. That song was just fabulous. Now, what about you? What shows do you watch on CBC? Do you watch Sesame Street? Uh, no. You don't watch Sesame Are you too old for Sesame Street? Yeah. Oh, oh you're too old for Sesame Street, these little tiny ones. Oh, you got icing on you, sweetie. We have a, a cheerful moment here, but you know what? That'll come off, honey. That'll come off. <laughs> oh. Now, how old are you? What's your name? My name is Dorothy. That's a piece we should do. Oh, you bet. <laughs> you are nine. And what about you, sweetie? Let's get you up here. One, two, three. Okay. Now, what's your name, honey? Abigail. And how old are you? Five. You are five years old? What about you guys? Five. And what's your name? Amanda. <laughs> what about you? Four. You're just four? You might be the littlest one here. Now, you know who this guy is, Fred Penner, don't you? Yeah? <laughs> We have a little mini fan club here. Oh, what a sweetheart. What beautiful children. My goodness. Hi. Nice to see you. Oh, what gorgeous hair you have. What was that, honey? Abigail. Abigail. Yes, it is. You know, I think it's time for some cake. Do you think we should have some cake? Hey. Because Peter hey. Jordan is serving it up, and we have napkins, and we have... Hopefully, we have forks. I'm sure... Oh, we've yeah. got forks. Yeah, we have forks. So should we go and get some cake? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put you down and we are gonna I'm go. Ready. You <laughs> what was that? I'm ready. You guys are how ready, ready. are you for cake? Really ready. 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 Are you guys ready for yeah, cake? Listen yeah. to the heart well we're gonna get Peter to continue to serve. Thanks. You you two sang so beautifully tonight. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to have you here. We gotta get everybody up and in line so everybody gets some cake. We need some Listen cake servers. I should get over there. Stories of the nation. Bring us together. <laughs> oh, we're going to go at it from both ends now. All right. Have you guys all had cake? Of the nation. You guys Bring all had cake? Us together. You have? Celebrate oh, <laughs> there's the proof. This has always been it's a on his face. <laughs> you haven't had any... Oh, you got cake on your pants, and we have a little girl with cake on her shirt. But, you know, parties are a little messy, but, boy, are they fun. Well, I managed to get it on my pants already, Jennifer. I see you, <laughs> you haven't know, been in there yet. No, you've got it on, on, on your pants in a couple of places. <laughs> but I've been serving kids, okay? So. Parties are washable fun. They Look really at this, Bert. I got it on my pants already. <laughs> we do want to send a big thank you to all of the technical staff who've helped us celebrate and put this production together. We want to especially thank uh, Sabrina, our uh, director. She's done such an incredible job of... Yeah, but they're not getting the cake first. Oh. <laughs> you and I, well, we're closer. We want to thank Robert, our fabulous floor director. I think we need a shot of Robert, Bert. And, uh, and Bert and everybody here. Kevin Cox is on camera. Everybody who's come out. And let's hope CBC we're going to see you us. and all of these folks in another 50 years. Oh. I think I'll need mechanical help. But <laughs> I think we both will. <laughs> but it has just been wonderful. Let's sing one more round of happy one birthday. One more round of happy because... birthday. What do you think? Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Cake, sir. Pardon? A piece of cake for you. Oh, I've been handing. I'm serving cake. Oh, you're serving. I've Thank up, you. Giving up my day <laughs> job. Thank you so much. We've got a lot of people who need cake. Oh, this is great. Thank you all so much for being with us tonight. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful. Hasn't it has it, been fun. Thanks a lot, Jennifer.